Hi guys, welcome back, Just Car Rob, and it's uh, late in the evening, and uh, I'm spending my time. This is very uncomfortable, but we must do it for the camera. Just do it, Rob. Shut up, stuntworm. Stuntworm. Okay, so you can see the design has changed, my friends. We're gone with a chainmail type of pattern instead of a uh, checkering pattern. When somebody says you have free artistic license, sometimes they revoke it. <laughs> my license has been revoked, people. Revoked. Apparently, uh, the guy asked me where I get my checkering patterns from, so I told him. And he must have run right out and bought a checkering book. Because the next thing I know, I'm getting an email and a picture of this pattern, which I have in my large cabinet of books and patterns. So, this is what we're doing. Um, so, let me bring you up to speed what we've done so far. Um, put the pattern on the gun stock. And took the SCM high speed air tool. Traced all this stuff. Put all the chain mail in there. And now, we're going through the slow and laborious process of... Should be using two hands, Rob. You don't want to chip the scale above it. Uh, cutting these in. I find it to be quite relaxing myself. Um, basically, we're just dipping our knife down into the point of these little chain mail deals. Uh, let's see. Can I bring you guys in closer? Closer. Closer. Okay. Closer. Whoa. Camera shifted. Okay, now you can see what I'm dealing with here, guys. It's going to take like forever to do these. Usually I do this on my lap with the gun stock across to my leg. But for you guys, i am uh, got it up here on the workbench. Got it rested out on a stand, and I still cannot find a comfortable position to carve this. So, see, I, I just taken the knife, take out that chip right there, and we come the other way. Use my thumb as a lever and pop that chip out there. Then you just want to little slivers, little tiny slivers until you get to the edge. That angles all of your angles all of your let's say this is one of these uh one of these chainmail things. What it does is it stacks them like fish scales. Easiest way to say it. Stacks them like fish scales. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do for the next million years. Is uh, I'm almost done for today. Was busy doing other things and came out here and to the, to the carving shop, a little relaxing, do a little carving. So, that's what we're, how far we got so far. But don't worry, my friends, don't worry. For those of you that want to see checkering, we have 
Uh, three more gun stocks to do, and I know of at least one or two of them that's going to be checkered. But this is another way of doing it. This is uh, in fashion right now. I think the checkering is timeless. It's been done for a thousand years since guns were invented. Checkering has been the mainstay. But now there's, you know, people that want, they don't want checkering. They want this chain mail design. Or they want a basket weave design or, you know, stuff like that. And, hey, it's their, it's their thing. It's their, it's their weapon. You know, you can have whatever you want on it. Uh, this is definitely going to cost him a little bit more because of all the knife work, all the hand work that has to go on. Well, even checkering. It's just the checkering is a little bit, believe it or not, checkering's quicker than cutting all these big, big, uh, I'm going to call them scales. They call it chain mail, but I'm going to call it scales. So, that's where we're at so far. Ugh. Yes. That's the other bonus of doing this on your lap. You do not have it flopping over on you. So, I think uh, we are going to do some more of this tomorrow. But I think uh, it's supposed to be 90 degrees tomorrow. So, I was thinking doing it outside, you know. Set the camera up on the tripod and hopefully there's a breeze. And I can just sit there and do some scale carving with you guys. Okay? So that's where we are right now, guys. I'll catch you later. Alright, guys. After a billion years of carving here, using the, uh, actually I switched to my OCC 1 inch, OCC T 1 inch carving knife um lot more control than over that two and a half inch okay so uh basically we've got all these for the forearm cut in okay and i've gone all over all of them with a the knife so they're nice and flat they don't have uh <whistles> waves in it okay and uh this will be all dimpled or stippled except for the ornament this will all be stippled up here okay and then these leaves will be shaped you see they got the vein in the middle there so they'll be cupped inward towards the middle and the same with the bottom side border here okay um we're not going to remove that much wood if anything, we will try to very well, we will really try to limit the amount of wood that comes off this side. Okay, um, I'll probably end up making these leaves go, these little leaves here, and that little scroll doohickey. Um, I'll round those edges over to the outside wood but not remove the outside wood same way with up here these real fine real fine deals that branch off into three leaves I'll roll that in and then this will be below the surface it's gonna be stippled okay so we're not we're gonna try not removing any wood from this side or this side this side okay we're going to make this, it's, every all, everything that's going to be carved stays in here. Okay. So the next process will to be taking the SCM with a very fine detail bit. And we'll do the same thing. We'll trace all of these chain mail deals. And our leaves pattern's the same as what's up on the forearm and we'll do the same thing here we're going to try not to um, take anything away from this side or up in here um, if you guys have ever seen the hieroglyphs 
that the Egyptian, Egyptians have done where they leave basically the flush surface is untouched but everything that's carved is always carved inboard uh, if you get a chance go on google and look up that e Egyptian hieroglyphs and you'll see that they don't touch the surfaces here and here all the work is done within that frame that they set and we're going to try pulling that off uh, with this so all the rounding and stuff of this will actually be this it won't we're not going to feather any of this away uh, we may sand it so that it's not a hard edge but we're not going to remove any material from here on this side or here or here so that's the game plan anyway i hope and i'm sure it will work out i've done it before um it's a little tricky but it can be done and when we get into that, you can see I already started doing it over here on this guy. But he's still in the uh, in this frame here. So, uh, oh, I missed a couple. Got to come back and cut them in yet? Okay. Um, so when you're cutting the, these in, you might want to make these uh, these scales here a little bit lower to make this stuff here stand out. But we're going to do the same thing. All this stuff be rounded, and we'll try not to touch any of our scales. Okay? I gotta go back in here and touch these up here. Yep. Alright, um, no big deal. We'll get that in. I have to... As you go over it, you'll see where you need to go back and cut deeper. Or, um, reshape. So that's it on this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Be awesome. Carve something awesome. And we will catch you guys on the next one. All right? So just carve. Share, subscribe, and like if you want to. And we'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye. All right, so we're working on this gun stock, guys, and uh, we're using the SCM High Speed Air Tool with the little uh, flame burr. This is the smallest flame burr I think they make, and we're going to come in here, and what we do is we go in a little bit deep in the front and then feather it back okay that's what we're doing so I'll show you a couple of them see if we can get zoomed in there come on clear up oh you just don't want to don't want to cooperate oh we had it there we go okay so yeah we got the big camera out today, guys. We got our phone fixed yesterday. Two hours to go there. Two hours to drive down to get the screen replaced on my camera. We might have some focusing issues here. I have it on active focus, but I'm not the best camera guy on the planet. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do a couple of these uh, chain mail deals. We're just, uh, we're not going to have the vacuum on. We're just going to have the SCM on. Just to give you an idea of what we're doing here. The SCM is, uh, really takes away the material. So you got to use a pretty light touch on it. We don't want to dig no holes. Nice light touch. 
We're kind of stacking these things up like fish scales, okay? And since we're our stock, it's going to be uh, what's classified as low relief carving. Now you can make these things as deep as you want, but remember, ultimately, this is where your hand is going to be when you're holding this weapon. So you don't want to create any hot spots on your hand. And often enough, if you go too deep, these little guys here will dig into your hand. They make the most excellent grip, but... I've used this uh, design on some of my walking sticks. And what I usually end up doing is coming back with sandpaper and... Because on a walking stick, these end up being much deeper. Um... Not that you have to put them in deep. I would say uh, if you're doing this for the first time, get a stick and uh, do a little stretch of it, maybe five inches long, and then grab it with your hand. And that will tell you how deep you need it. If it really bites through your hand, creates a hot spot on your hand uh, where it's digging in too much, you can just fan them back. Now I'll have to go back over all of these scales with uh, some sandpaper or a knife. clean them up okay so turn off or you could try the uh, the micro motor or Dremel with a diamond bit now that is a diamond bit that we're using But I'm just taking a little bit smaller diamond bit here, or I'm sorry, larger diamond bit, and using more of the side than the point to flatten these out from the uh, the high speed tool with that little diamond burr leaves little dips in them. You can have yours as smooth or as rough as you like them. And as you sand these down, of course it's going to lower the distance from the top to the next scale. So if you go a little bit deep, don't worry about it. Because you can always come back and smooth them out and bring them down. That's the other reason I like coming across here with a knife. Is uh, the knife will flatten me. It also makes that smooth surface that I'm looking for. But there again with a knife you gotta be careful not to go too crazy 
And you can use a flat chisel too, or a skewer, to cut these guys in. I'm wearing my jeweler's glasses right now. It's basically just a magnifier. So I can keep an eye on those surfaces as I'm cutting them in. I think I'm going to try the larger football burr or uh, flame burr. Okay, but you can see how that's going, right? With the, that's the micro motor. We did the high speed uh, air tool. And the knife. Okay. So basically with the knife you do the same thing. It's hard to do this because the, the stock is not turned correctly for a knife. Most of the time when I do this stuff with a knife, it's on my lap. Or laying across the arms of a chair. But basically it's the same operation. You come in. Uh, let's get you in there. Okay. You'll come in at the top of the thing. Scale. And you'll just cut, push down a little bit. I hate doing it this way because I usually use my thumb to drive the knife. And I just can't get a hold of it in this position that way. Here, let's go left-handed. Maybe that'll help. Okay. So usually I use my thumb for like a pivot. Like that. Just no comfortable way of doing this with this at the bench guys and you want to be comfortable when you're doing this kind of stuff uh, so you don't slip because this is walnut and it's I want to say it's kind of brittle on the edges I love the way it cuts and uh, the way it holds detail is awesome it's not so kind to your tools because it is a hardwood Thus the name hardwood. So you're just basically going uh, coming in at that tip and then bring it to your stop cut. And then I work it back until the paper's gone. This is a much more accurate way of doing these scales. have a lot more control with the knife blade than you do uh, any other rotary tool. The rotary tools want to try walking on you. The SCM, because it's so fast, is probably the best one if you're going to use a, a rotary tool. Um, but I have done these with Dremels and smaller diamond bits. Are we in? Okay, good. We're in frame. I always got to keep checking because uh, 
gun stock tends to move around quite a bit. Uh, the other reason I do a lot of this is on a, on, a, on my lap is because of the shape of the gun stock. It wants to flop. When you're when you're up like this, right on the edge, um, you got a balancing thing there because of the stock itself. It wants to flop on you. So it's much better for me. Let's zoom out. Wrong way. Okay, so it's a lot better for me to actually have it in my hand, uh, have the stock up under my arm where you can hang on to it when you're doing this stuff. So, I don't know how good this is going to be for the camera, but. Okay, I got the stock up underneath my arm, like where it would normally be. And you can see, I'm using my, yep, okay, you can see. See, I'm using my thumb to drive the blade. And uh, you can control this blade so far as to just take the paper off. Okay. And then I'll switch over to my other hand. That using your, I'm using my thumb as a lever it gives me better control over the blade using my thumb to push I'm using my thumb to push the blade checking to make sure that everything's staying in in frame So, I think the scales come out better. I mean, the the air tools and Dremels and stuff will do it faster, but then you gotta still go back with sandpaper or whatever, diamonds, sandpaper. You gotta go back to clean all this up. Now when I'm done with a knife on this, that's it, I'm done. Okay, you can see the, well, I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me zoom you in. Come on, focus. Focus, you camera. Camera don't want to focus. Let's back it out a little bit so we get a good focus. Okay, you can see from the air tools, there's little waves in your chain mail. Now that's got to be cleaned up with um, normally a little file or sandpaper but with a knife you don't get those waves. You just get nice clean cuts. So that's all up to you on how you want to do it. Um, I enjoy uh, doing a lot of this with just a knife. It gives you a sense of accomplishment, I guess. And it, you'll get that same sense of accomplishment. It don't matter what tool you use. It's just that um, I've done this for so long with before I had any of these fancy tools I've always I've done all this stuff before with just knives and chisels so I don't know if it's just because I that's the way I I've done it or for a long time and I'm just more comfortable with it I mean, it's a, 